Good morning, everyone. As always, place your cross on first. Why? You call yourself a follower of Christ. It's simple. That's why you put your cross on. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I know a lot of people figure, like, why you look up when you pray? Because in the Bible, I was reading Psalms one day. He's like, I would praise you in the morning. I would look up. I would take my prayer. I would look up. You know, in life, we always been taught to pray with our heads bowed down. I, think, I don't think nothing's wrong with that. But sometimes you got to look up from where your source comes from. Let's start reading from Psalm 126. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, The Lord have done great things for them. The Lord have done great things for us. Where are we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. They said, By sorrow the heart is made right. He that goeth forth and weepeth bury precious seed shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Psalm 127. I love this. I read this not too long ago. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Y'all ain't understand it. But why are you saying that you labor in vain that build it? Because it's going to fall. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman maketh, waketh up but in vain. He said it is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrow. For so he giveth his beloved sleep. One thing you're going to realize about living for God, no matter what you go through in life, he's going to give you sleep, especially in the night watches. Yeah, sometimes he might have you up praying for people, but he's going to give you rest. Come to all, me, all those who are rearing and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. What part of that don't y'all understand? A lot of people stay up late nights, can't sleep, and then get up early. Ain't getting no sleep. You know, that's not that's not good. It's not good for your body. And if you love God and you live for God, you're going to get you some rest. These said, low children are inheritance of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. I talked about this before. That's part of his reward. As, as arrows are in the hand of mighty men, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Blessed is everyone, Psalm 128. Blessed is everyone that fears the Lord, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine. Now, think about this. A fruitful vine, right? For your wife. virtuous woman a lot of people know what a virtuous woman is they talk about it they read it well things are different how they is now well all you gotta do is read Ruth Ruth is a good example of a virtuous wife in so many ways y'all might want to pay attention to how she did it and how she got the husband that God was wanting her to have behold that thou shalt be the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion, and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Yea, thou shalt see thy children, children, and peace upon Israel. A blessing from the Lord is long life. Don't you want it? All right, dear people. Let's go over to Joshua, one of my favorite one-liners in the Bible. Starting with Joshua 24, chapter 14. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. You see, uh, God has a way of putting away. He wants you to put away certain things. He does. And if it seem evil to you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites. 
whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. People always read that part. But look, let's continue on. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, he is that brought us about out of the fathers out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage, and which did those great signs in our sight, and preserved us in all the way wherein we went, and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out from before us all the people, even the Amorites which dwelt in the land. Therefore we will serve the Lord, for he is our God. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye cannot serve the Lord, for he is an holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. Now if you stop right there, you're like, oh, this goes against the Bible. Let's read on. If you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn. So what he said, if unless the Lord builds the house, you labor in vain that build it. If you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn to, and, to, and do you hurt and consume you. After that, he have done you good. And the people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said unto the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen you, the Lord, to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. Now therefore put away, said he, the strange gods which are among you, and incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. And the people said unto Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, and his voice will we obey. Why you put your cross on? So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and set them a statute and an ordinance in Shechem. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God and took a great stone and set it up there under an oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said it to all the people, Behold, this stone shall be witness unto us. But if it hard, have heard all the words of the Lord which we speak unto us. They said, well, they said, the promises to the Lord is binding. When you give the life to, the, to God, that's a promise. It shall be therefore a witness unto you, lest you deny your God. So Joshua let the people depart, every man to his inheritance. And it came to pass after these things that Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being a hundred and ten years old. Don't you just love God, people? And let the Lord build the house. Let's put it this way. Joshua was telling them, hey, do you know what you're saying? And I'm telling you today, do you know what you're saying when you say you are a Christian? Do you know what you're saying? Do you know you just made a vow to the Lord? Because what's the what they ask you when you get baptized? Do you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? They ask you that. Do you believe he died on the cross for your sins? They ask you that. Basically, Joshua's like, do you accept God as your Lord? All right, put away all that other stuff. Put away it. You know, I've seen so many people, including myself, bounce from house to house trying to find your way you don't understand and it gets quite strenuous it's, it's hard to find someone on one accord you understand with you and the Lord it's hard in this world that we live in because everybody's worshiping how they want to worship that's why it's hard for people to find good God fearing I ain't saying perfect good God fearing believing husbands and wives to join together you understand? It's getting worse in this world. Nobody cares anymore. Everybody's doing their own thing. You know. Marriage is honorable. And the Bible talks about it constantly. Constantly. And I've failed twice. You understand? I don't consider it a failure completely. I figure it to, I figure it to be a learning process. But I know one thing, in order for me to really preach that word and be in that pulpit, I need something, a wife, a virtuous one. I really do. He said, uh, 
A pre preacher has to be the hus husband of one wife. He has to be married. You understand? But in the meantime, I can be a teacher. But uh, as far as being in the pulpit, I don't think I'm ready for that yet. I have not found that. I haven't received that reward just yet from the Lord. Maybe I got some work to do. And maybe he got some work to do on me. You understand? But the thing is, stay grounded in the faith no matter what. If things don't work out, keep going. This is, this is a reward, a plan that God has for you. To have you with children. To have you with a husband and a wife. And to have you live a long life. A blessed life. Do you understand? Don't you want that? He said, don't be overly righteous. Why destroy yourself? And don't be overly wicked. Why die before your time? You know, a lot of people have lost their lives before their time because of disobedience and rebellion to God. But there's no such thing as dying before your time if you live the life pleasing to the Lord. When your time is up, your time is up. But this is a blessing that you, everybody's not going to receive it. But you can. It's part of the plan. He tells us to train our children in the ways of the Lord. That's one thing we got to do. So when the Lord builds the house, he starts building you. And you start building your foundation off of him. And everything that you do off of him. And it was the first one, 26, joy and laughter. Yeah, you're going to go through some things. But he's going to turn that sorrow and that pain into joy. He's going to give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. You see, Joshua knew this. Why was Joshua able to take over the mountain of Moses? Because God saw something in Joshua that he didn't see it in other people. Do you understand? That's what you want. You want God to see something in you that he don't see in everybody. But you got to build your house around Serving the Lord. I done had so many houses over the past few years and failed. I ain't saying it was all somebody else's fault. It was partially my fault. You know why I blame myself as a man? Because a man is designed to be the leader. He's designed to put the house in order. And sometimes, you know what, my, most men fail in that? Because we want to be soft. Take what Joshua was saying. Hey, are you sure you want to do this? God is a jealous God. God is this and that. You understand? You sure you want to do this? This show you what you want? Like even when you step into marriage, are you sure this is what you want? A lot of people live in a the world they want to have their cake and eat it too. One thing I didn't realize when I'm married, I'm married. I do away with childish things. Yes, I live my life. I enjoy my life. I enjoy the fruit of my labor at home. Home starts to be important to me. Why God keeps talking about building up your house? Because it's important. It's your safe haven. It's your peace. It's your reward from God. You shouldn't have to go home to disruption, to drama. You shouldn't have to. Fighting, arguing. You know, and women, y'all need to start submitting to your husbands. And if, if you with somebody who you want to be your husband, start submitting to him. And men, y'all need to love y'all wives, not disrespecting them or treating them because they're a the weaker vessel or taking advantage of them because they're a woman. Because some men do that. Take advantage of the authority God has given man. Don't do it. Don't abuse her just because you're a man, you feel you can go out and sleep with multiple women. No, I'm a man. And... Joseph, I mean, David was a man too and still got punished for that. You think you're any different from David? You think because you're a man, you get the right to sleep around? And then if you're a woman, you ain't got the right to have multiple friends no more. You don't. He said, your desire will be for your husband. Right? And your desire is going to be for your wife. Right? Your body is no longer yours. It's hers. And her body is no longer hers. It's yours. Do you understand? And you respect your body. You bring it up. You love it. You cherish it. That's biblical, what I'm telling you right now. 
Now, I'm telling you what love is. Now, love is not always. Okay, yes. That's not love. Love is correction. Love is everything that you can think of. If you love somebody, you want to do things to make them happy. Not people please them. Do things to make them happy in line with the word of God. Let's say yay to everything. You know, uh, I know people that going through the same problems. When I was going through the problems with these same people, they still doing the same thing. And God put them in my mind and giving them some advice yesterday. Hey, you can't have all these friends. Oh, I don't cheat. I didn't say you cheated. I said you can't have all these friends. You can't have people just popping up at your house anytime when you're married. You can't have people, let's put it this way. If you're married to a husband and you're married to a wife, or you're trying to be in that position, that's who your, your help comes from, the Lord, and your help's supposed to come from them too. You see, you have no right to go outside of your marriage or your relationship headed to his marriage to go ask somebody else for anything. Oh, that's hard, ain't it? That means you ain't got no backup plans no more. You know, because when you have a backup plan, you're not putting all into your house. You're not putting all into your spouse. You're not putting all into your children. And you ain't building your house on a solid foundation. You letting the devil be able to come in and dine with you. You letting them into your house. You letting him destroy your house. And then after it happened, Lord, why am I going through this? I ever heard people say, well, you don't have to knock before you enter my door. You got to knock before you enter mine. I'm going to tell you why. Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Jesus held some respect to people's houses. He ain't just going to walk in your house. You got to invite him in. And nobody's not just going to walk in my house. I got to invite you in. If you let anybody walk in your house, uninvited, don't tell them who you letting in. Do you understand? Because some people move in and they don't want to leave. Now you got to fight to get them out. And that's hard. I've been there. I'm not going back there. I love people. I forgive people. But one thing about me, I really don't forget nothing. You know why? Because that's called wisdom. You learn from your errors. You learn from your mistakes. You know, a lot of things I think I was just, I didn't put my foot down. In my first marriage, I didn't put my foot down. In my second marriage, I didn't put my foot down. I tried, but I couldn't do it. But this time around, my foot is going to be on solid ground. If, even if I got to start building the house with the Lord by myself first. Do you understand? And I want the joy. Don't you want the joy? Don't you want a family? Don't you want somebody you can come home to and love and cherish and not have to worry about them going out and talking to somebody else? A uh, ha-ha, he-he, and, and all other people's faces and stuff. Straight disrespecting you. You see, uh, everybody talk about the physical act of adultery, but God broke it down. Jesus broke it down. To look at a man or a woman to lust after them, you have committed adultery with them in your heart. So all these friends you've got, you commit the spiritual adultery with half of them. I'm going to tell you one thing about woman and man and woman's friendships. Somebody want more than what you think. There's always one that wants more than what you think. That's why you need to just not even have it. Cut ties. You understand? I'm telling y'all something that's going to help you. Because I've learned. You understand? When God gives me that one. I'm not talking to no other women. You can cancel Christmas on that. If you want to talk about the Lord, you can talk to my wife. Woman. I handle the men's side. She can handle the woman's side. That's why I'm starting to realize that's how it's supposed to work. Because the devil is lurking, especially on Facebook and stuff. Oh, I see you love God. I do. And I love my wife too. Bye. <laughs> I'm just being real with you people. You got to be safe here. If they can't talk to your wife, they can't talk to their hu your husband, they don't need to be talking to you. 
Do you understand? Let me pause and I will continue. 